Today is September 5th, which means that in about 8 hours as of the time this video is uploaded, Starfield should be unlocked for the non-early access players. Since the beginning of the early access period, I have put in about 50 hours into the game, which I feel is enough time to at least get my first impressions of the game out. Yes, first impressions at 50 hours. That may seem like a bit much for just first impressions, but this game is massive and I don't intend to do a full review until I platinum the game and do at least one new game plus. All the gameplay in this video is from the first hour and a half and will for the most part be entirely spoiler free and i won't mention any characters that don't show up past the first planet so 50 hours in just how good is the game well if the amount of time i put into it isn't evidence enough of the fact that i like the game well yeah i do in fact like the game to put it simply it's a bethesda game studios game so if you like any of their games then you will love this game starfield feels more like an elder scrolls game surprisingly than a fall game which i'm not going to complain about that i love elder scrolls current favorite thing to do in the game right now is exploring i do just like flying around in between planets and discovering everything that there is on the planet despite the procedure procedural generation that game, that word is always hard to say when i'm traveling between different star systems i can't resist the urge to just land on the first planet i see even if it's just on the path to another star system i spent quite a lot of time on backwater barren planets just exploring because i keep finding things that pique my interest although i have been in love with space since i was a little kid so that probably has something to do with that but who knows one thing I didn't expect, honestly, was the slight horror elements throughout the game. There are alien life forms that exist, and even like the ones that you find immediately out of the gate are kind of creepy, but the further you get into the game, the more that you discover. Some of them get quite scary, although some of them are pretty cute. The environmental storytelling also gives off horror elements in some areas. So let's say you land on a backwater planet far off in a corner of the galaxy, and you find an abandoned research station or a mine with the lights like dim and barely working and bodies littered throughout the area with little to no evidence as to what caused it. Going through places like that were kind of terrifying because I was kind of expecting like the xenomorph or something like that or some other alien creature just to pop out of nowhere. Which, I mean, hasn't happened yet, but I'd imagine it could. That's the type of things that you can expect to experience in the game. Other types of things that you might find in abandoned research stations and such are space pirates that just kind of show up there and are occupying them and using them as bases, which makes sense. Now moving on to some of the other space-related things. Spaceships look amazing. Besides also said that the aesthetic they were going for was NASA punk and honestly they absolutely nailed that aesthetic. The, the ships and, and the suits spark a sense of familiarity with technology that we currently have while also adding a little spark of futurism that also at the same time seems like hey that's something that we could have. There were moments in the game where I realized that some of the technology seemed so feasible that I would probably never live to actually see it, but that future generations would. And that honestly kind of made me feel really bittersweet. Like, on one hand, I'll never personally get to see humanity make it deep into the stars and have all this technology, but I've got to live vicariously through these games, which, you know, it's it's pretty cool regardless. Anyways, back to the ships. Um, the customization for them go pretty far, as long as you're willing to spec into to ship customization and even if you don't it's fine because you might find the ship of your dreams just sitting on a sitting on a rock and you know there might be some people there there might not be but you know hey i'm not gonna judge that hey I, i'm just gonna say it. i didn't buy or make my second or third ships that i got now, ship combat and piloting can feel a little clunky at first, uh, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it, the more that you level up your piloting skill, and the better ship that you have, the whole experience becomes a lot more fun. I really, really love dogfighting. It is very satisfying to jump into a different system, get into a 1v4, and have to like, outmaneuver ships while also taking them out one at a time, and then when you're fighting the last one, you get a prompt that you can board, and then it, when you do board, the entire ship is in like a zero-G environment, and everything is just so satisfying about it once you get good at it and when it comes to the space suits there are a ton to be found and you can mix and match different helmets and packs and suits and stuff which it's a bethesda game did you expect to not be able to creating your suits works pretty similarly to fallout 4's power ar armor system where upgrades didn't change too much of the aesthetics for the most part but the benefits are pretty good the weapons are pretty cool i haven't found all of them yet but i definitely found a few that i will be using for the rest of my playthrough one of the 
weak points in regards to weapons, I will say, is the lack of in the wild unique weapons. Like, where Starfield, the only place you really find unique weapons is either during a quest line or you buy them, which Bethesda has been doing since Fallout 4. However, I kind of miss the way that worked in like older Fallouts and Elder Scrolls and Skyrim, especially where you can go through a cave or a dungeon, like completely like separated from any quest line, and at the end of it, find like some really cool stuff or like the Daedric artifacts and some of that. I wish that they did stuff like more stuff like that in this game. I personally haven't found anything like that, so I'm just assuming that like with Fallout 4, there's just not many, especially compared to Skyrim. Customization wise, I can't exactly say, say much. It's the same system as Fallout 4 when it comes to weapon crafting, which I'm not going to complain about because I think Fallout 4's weapon crafting system is near perfect. As far as the rest of the crafting system goes, I haven't really dived that deep into it yet, so I'll wait till my full review to cover that. My favorite gameplay tool, however, has to be the boost pack. It is very fun to use, it is very useful. In the beginning of the game, when you only had the base skill, it can be a little lackluster. However, you once you eventually get the upgraded pack and you level up the skill, it gets a lot better and a lot more usable and you can use it in a lot more variety of ways. The place where it's the most useful, however, is zero-g environments. You really cannot navigate a zero-g gravity environment without a boost pack, so definitely spec into them specifically for those because there are quite a bit of them. When it comes to the story, I am still relatively early into it, so I can't say a, whole, a lot on, on that because I keep getting sidetracked with side stuff and exploration. Um, however, like I mentioned earlier, new game plus is a thing so i would personally recommend doing the main quest more than you would usually in a bethesda game and like maybe actually do the main quest although again i haven't beaten it so take that as you will in regards to the quality of the story that i've done so far i do really enjoy it i think so far it's something the strongest bethesda main story next to next to fallout 3 i think um in terms of main story wise and oblivion constellation is a very laid back and all-encompassing faction so it kind of feels natural to be a part of it no matter what type of character you are because I chose a space scoundrel as my ba background and it still felt pretty natural to be a member of Constellation and there are certain quests that I've done so far that feel like they have a sense of urgency to them which kind of made me do them immediately but where I am right now it kind of doesn't feel that way so I'm branching off doing side content and like in other Bethesda Game Studios games there are many factions you can join and you can join all of them without any conflicting ideals or tension being caused there are four main factions Actions so far from what I have discovered there might be more I'm not entirely sure and I've com fully completed two of their quest lines and the other two I haven't really done much of them I have loved the two that I've done so far and the rewards for doing them are very very good you absolutely should do these in your main playthrough and in new game plus you want to do them both times a lot of your companions come from constellation so far I like all the ones I've met like in most modern Bethesda games you can romance one of your crew members and each one has their own unique dialogue actually as your friendship slash relationship grows and grows each time you make any major decision in the main quest or finish a long side quest line they will have something to say about it and will give their own takes and opinions and whether or not they approve the decisions you made or not any crew member you have a few as a companion will also join in on dialogue with their own thoughts and opinions on the current situation slash conversation which i absolutely loved the one semi complaint i have with companions is that they still don't understand the concept of self so if you have any stealthing to do have them wait outside where you are for a little bit. Now, speaking of stealth... I want to quickly mention that the stealth mechanics in this game feel a lot better than any previous Bethesda game, but they still aren't perfect. Like, it's nowhere near Dishonored, but it's better than any BGS game ever. Combat, in general, feels very, very good. The guns feel pretty solid, other than the semi-permanent weapon sway, which has not been that big of an issue for me. It's just, like something I noticed. I haven't touched melee weapons at all, so I can't really comment on them. Now onto the technical side of things. I'm playing a game on a PC, and my system has an i5-10400, an RTX 2080 Ti, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and I have the game installed on an SSD. The game is honestly kind of unoptimized for NVIDIA cards, I will say, because I have some friends that have similar systems and they run a lot better with, AM with an AMD GPU. The game is also a very much more CPU intensive than I was expecting it to be, so like, if you have a better CPU than me, then you're going to be a lot better off. For, a for anyone using an NVIDIA graphics card on PC, I highly recommend installing the DLSS mod until Bethesda officially add DLSS and FSR 3 implementation. With my PC, I'm running the game at about 35 to 50 FPS with a different with a different range of settings, ranging from low to high at 1080p. 
However, I'm expecting with DLSS and FSR 3 I'll probably be able to do medium high, hopefully. I'm honestly kind of surprised that my 2080 Ti is starting to feel outdated because, I mean, I was playing Elden Ring on, like last year and it was running flawlessly. So it kind of sucks to see that that card is starting to become obsolete. From what I know on the console side of things, both the Series X and S run flawlessly. I have no first-hand experience with them, however, but from what I've heard, the Xboxes run the game very well. For anyone using a Steam Deck, uh, I have first-hand experience from a friend that says that it will run at the lowest settings at a playable frame rate, so if you want to play it on the go, you can. Graphically, the game is pretty good. I think it looks great, looks better than most Bethesda Game Studios games, and is about what I expected it to look like. However, I don't really care that much about graphics, so take that as you will. The sound design is also really well done. I, I, I felt immersed sound-wise the entire time. The only complaints I really have is that taking off and landing are a bit loud. The music is one of my favorite things about this game so far. The best way I can describe the soundtrack is 2001 Space Odyssey meets Skyrim meets Star Wars. Bug-wise, honestly, quite surprised. Um, you know, usually you expect a Bethesda game to be littered with bugs. Which, there are bugs, but I haven't found anything too game-breaking or disruptive. The worst thing that I've seen is companions randomly disappearing. But that's easily solved by just sleeping in a bed and they teleport to you, so it's not that big of a deal. And other stuff that you see is like characters floating and clipping through stuff. So it's like it's whatever. It's fine. I don't I don't care. It's it's honestly enhances the experience when it take the tracks. So like it really that's that's personal preference at, at that point. Overall, I am absolutely loving this game, and I believe it to be a return to form for Bethesda Game Studios. They've learned from their mistakes regarding Fallout 76 and have returned to making high quality single player RPGs. I saw a lot of content to get through in the game as well as content to make but i hope that those who will start playing the game today enjoy it as much as i have so far i would like to say the full review should be out in a week or two but i honestly can't say when i'll have played enough to fully review it it could be anywhere from next week to two months so if you want to get notified that when i do release my final thoughts in the game make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you can be the first to know my full review hope everyone has fun at the game and make sure you stay safe out there in the starfield